Timbers 360 is presented by Toyota. Welcome to this week's edition of Timbers 360. I'm your host, Jake Sivan. After a weekend off because of the international break, the Portland Timbers now return to play with a massive match away at the Colorado Rapids that has big time Western Conference playoff implications. It's also the 13th annual Stand Together Week. And who better to tell you more about that than the Portland Timbers Vice President of Community and Social Impact, Dr. Robin Beavers on KGW's Hello Rose City. And the Portland Timbers are here, but they won't be on the pitch again until September 14th. That's because the players will be helping out in the community. Mm -hmm. Dr. Robin Beavers is the Vice President of mm -hmm. Social and Community Impact with the team. Mm -hmm. You join us right now. Welcome. Thank you for having us back. I know. We're so glad to talk mm -hmm. about the annual Stand Together Week. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. It's the 13th year. Yes, 13 years of going out and providing service to the community. Yeah, Love tell it. us a little bit more about kind of what the week is, who participates, just kind of a yes. big broad stroke about what you guys will be doing next week. So Stand Together Week is our annual volunteer week, and um, we go out in the community, the players, partners, corporate partners, fans, the front office staff, we all go out and do various volunteer activities um, with different nonprofits throughout the city of Portland. Okay, so or the metro area, not just the Portland. metro area. Yes. So it's a big event. Everyone's involved in the team. Well, and I also know that towards the end of the week, there's a new event as well, or you're participating in an event, the We Believe in Portland event. Absolutely. This Earlier this spring, we participated with Adopt Up One Block mm -hmm. and the We Believe people over at Thesis, We Believe in Portland, Clean Up Portland project. So they're doing it again. It just happens to fall during our Stand Together week. So we thought, why not merge the two on that okay. particular Friday? So we're excited to participate um, with Adopt One Block and Thesis and the whole We Believe movement okay. and to help make Portland a little cleaner. And that is mostly a, a cleanup activity, That correct? is correct. We, um, our group, which includes Tillamook and City of, or, or CORE Recycling, yeah. um, City of Roses Recycling, they're going to be with us um, volunteering around the stadium. We're going to do cleanup around the stadium. Right where so, you're at. That, right makes, sense. At. that makes so, so much yes, sense. Excited. What are some of the other organizations that benefit from Stand Together? Absolutely. We have some of our favorites that we've done over the past years, um, including Habitat for Humanity. Mm -hmm. This year we won't get to build houses. They're all built <laughs> for right now, but we'll uh, work in the restore. Okay. So I'm um, putting together furniture and items. Project Lemonade is a big one. Um, Friends of the Trees, we go out and do some spread some mulch, okay. getting, getting the environment ready for the fall. Which, one, which ones do the players love to do the most? Oh boy, I don't know. They're, um, I don't know about all time favorites, mm -hmm. but last year we went to Trillium Family Services and worked in their healing garden. Oh, wow. And then the players got the opportunity to um, interact and kick the ball around with the kids. And I think that was really fun for those kids that are in residential care. Um, they don't often get to leave the, the campus. Um, I think they also like the children's book bank where they go and clean books. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, get the books ready to be distributed to youth as well. So it sounds like there's a ton of activities. The players love it. The team loves yes. it. Can you tell us uh, how if people want to find out more about Stand Together and all the things that you do, how do you go about doing it? Absolutely. That? That's simple. Just go to our website, okay. uh, www.timbers.com slash Stand Together. Okay. And then click on Stand Together Week, and you'll get all the information about both our kickoff at Top Golf, and there's still some um, spots to sign up for Stand Together Week. Perfect. So we would love for people to volunteer. We love that. Well, thank you so much for being here again. Thank you. And you guys out there, stick around. We'll be right back. Coming up, we take a look back at some moments from the 13th annual Stand Together Week. We'll learn about this year's Hispanic Heritage Scarf. Get to know Timbers defender Eric Miller. And we get you ready for tomorrow's important match against the Rapids. Timbers 360 is presented by Toyota. The tee-off is the kickoff for this year's Stand Together Week, a week of service throughout the community of Portland and the surrounding areas. A tradition that started 14 years ago involving thousands of hours of volunteers working to benefit the beautiful place we call home. Feel free to introduce yourself to all the players, our front office staff, 
We hope you hit them straight and enjoy your time here at Top Golf. The 13th annual Stand Together Week kicked off last Sunday with the Timbers Tee Off Golf Classic at Top Golf. Throughout the past week, Timbers players, coaches, staff, partners, and fans volunteered at numerous projects to help support the community that supports them. Here's a look at just a small amount of the work that's been done over the past week. This is the kickoff to our 13th annual Stand Together Week here at the Portland Timbers. Stand Together Week is a way for the Portland Timbers to support nonprofit projects across the city. Well, this is a really important initiative for our club. We all look forward to it every year. On Monday, the club visited the Sunshine Division in Wilsonville, packing boxes of food for their home delivery program. A great mission, and uh, we as a player right now here is giving back to the community. Longtime Timbers midfielder Diego Chara joined the assembly line, participating in the club's initiative for the 13th year in a row. I feel great, you know, give uh, something back to the community. I think it's special, and uh, uh, to have this program in the club, I mean, it's, it's mean a lot for, for me as a player for the community too. The nonprofit estimated the group would pack about 500 boxes or more. It's going very fast, so I don't know. All headed to clients across the metro area who, for one reason or another, are unable to leave their homes. Sunshine Division says this is a critical time to provide support as the need for food spikes when kids return to school. And it's really nice for us to have an opportunity to give back and show everyone here in the Portland area how much they mean to us. In Wilsonville, Ashley Grams, KGW News. In honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, which begins this weekend, the Portland Timbers partnered with local artist Marlon Reyes Ayala. We spoke with her about the inspiration behind her design. When I got approached about making this scarf, I really wanted to think about what is Hispanic heritage to me. Realistically, out in the world, there is not one way to represent the entirety of Hispanic culture and Hispanic identities. All of the flowers on the scarf, both this side and the other side, are inspired by flowers that are native to different Latin American countries. Some of them are national flowers and others are just native to those lands. I tried to represent some of the players' home countries as well. I hope people will see this scarf and see a part of themselves and their community reflected. I hope they can know that they're a big part of this organization and of the fan base and feel like this is a really big acknowledgement of them and what they bring to the club's fans. A limited number of scarves will be sold on game day exclusively at the team store. Make sure to arrive early to get yours. Timbers 360 is presented by Toyota. The National Soccer Hall of Fame announced its finalists for the Builder Class of 2025, which includes Soccer City USA legend Clive Charles. A worthy candidate for the honor, Clive played an integral role in developing what soccer is in Portland, but also around the entire country. Over the next several weeks, the Hall of Fame committee will make its final decision. Out of 10 finalists, only one will be inducted as a builder. Defender Eric Miller joined the Portland Timbers last season. He's now in his second year with the club, but his 11th in Major League Soccer. Eric reflects on his career and what the sport means to him. My name is Eric Miller. I'm a defender for the Portland Timbers. This is my 11th year in MLS and my second year with the Portland Timbers. I'll be very like about It is, it is close to the end, probably closer than I, I wish, but that's the reality of the situation. It's very hard to get old in professional sports. I just really love the game. I love soccer. I love the everyday of it. I love the process and I love just being around it. And so I think if I was going to be really happy in whatever comes after soccer, it would probably be something involving soccer, whether that's coaching or a front office or something with the player association. I just love the game and I feel like 
because I've been around it for so long in so many different capacities, I have a lot to get back to it because the game has given me a ton. And I think other than me loving it, I think I kind of owe something to a lot of the younger guys because the older guys gave me a lot when I was a young player. And I think you kind of have to pass it along to this new generation of players. I didn't really think I was gonna become a professional soccer player. I <laughs> was planning on going to law school. I was just like very excited to be playing division one soccer. And I was like, this is amazing. And then my first year at Creighton, we had like a bunch of guys who were kind of maybe gonna get drafted at MLS. And I was like, oh, I'm like close to this level. Like maybe this could be a thing. In from Anthony, Perez lining up the header, big save for Mila, and the follow up is in. Oh man, uh, to be a journeyman is tough in a lot of ways. Um, it means a lot of teams didn't want you, <laughs> but it also means a lot of teams wanted you. And I think that's important too of like, in this league, I think there's a lot of movement between different types of players. For me, I'm a guy that for various reasons at one time or another got moved around. I think it means you can adapt well to new environments. I think it means you gain a lot of experience in, in seeing how different clubs do things, how different players do things. You just end up interacting with such a massive number of people at different clubs that I think you learn a lot of good things to do and a lot of bad things to do. So I think kind of throughout my career, I've just tried to use all these experience in different places to figure out what I think is important, what I value, and what I think are good things to be doing and trying to show that example every day. And a substitution coming now for the Timbers. It'll be Eric Miller coming on. And this is the 200th career Major League Soccer appearance for Eric Miller, who will come on for Anthony. Moving was different for me at different points in my career. At first, when I was young, I just wanted to play. And I would get into a situation where I wasn't playing and I got nervous about either my next contract or trying to stay within the national team picture and stuff like that. And so I think at that time, it was very much a little more selfish, for better or worse. It was like, I need to play. I'm a young player, I need to get out there and then, kind of as it's evolved and gone on and I've gotten older, I've kind of realized it's more about what I bring to the group, whether that's starting every week or just being a good older guy in the locker room. And I think a lot of the impact that you bring as you start to uh, accumulate this experience in different places is just doing things the right way every day. And I think for me, being consistent about how you train, being consistent about how you treat people is super, super important. And I think for me, the, the most important things I've learned is just how you treat people, how you treat the staff, how you treat support staff, and just being really consistent and intentional about how you are as a teammate and how you are as a professional, because those are the things you can really control and impact. Timbers 360 is presented by Toyota. After an international break, the Portland Timbers are back at it this weekend as they begin the stretch run to the Audi MLS Cup playoffs and as they begin what is undoubtedly their most important week of the season to this point. Portland will play three matches in eight days, all against teams in the top four of the Western Conference table. The Timbers are currently in eighth place in the West on 40 points, but the standings are so tight. Just four points separate five spots between fourth and eighth in the West. As a reminder, nine teams will make the postseason in each conference. The eight and nine seeds have to play in a wild card game, while seeds one through four get home field advantage in the round one best of three series. So that fourth place spot, that's the goal. And currently sitting in fourth place are the Colorado Rapids on 44 points, who the Timbers will face on Saturday on the road. Then on Wednesday, the Timbers are back here at Providence Park to host the first place LA Galaxy before heading back on the road next weekend to take on third place Real Salt Lake. By now, the Timbers know the Colorado Rapids very well, and they've had quite a bit of success against them. They've played twice this year. They beat them soundly both times, 4-1 on opening night, and then 4-0 in the League's Cup group stage. However, both of those matches were at Providence Park. The Timbers now have to go a mile high to Dick's Sporting Goods Park, where the Rapids are really good. They're 8-2-3 this year, and the Rapids are continuing to have a great season. After losing to the Timbers in League's Cup, they then eliminated four straight Liga MX teams, including Giants Club America in the quarterfinals, before eventually finishing in third place in League's Cup 
That earned them a berth in next year's CONCACAF Champions Cup. The Timbers played their most recent match, that 1-0 win over Seattle two weeks ago without their two leading scorers, Jonathan Rodriguez and Felipe Mora. They were both suspended. The Timbers will get them both back for this match against Colorado. Rodriguez after yellow card accumulation and Felipe Mora after appealing what was given as a two-match suspension reduced to just the one, he will be available to face the Rapids. It's a big match beginning, an ultra-important stretch for the Timbers. 6.30 Pacific time start from Colorado. The Timbers and the Rapids, you can watch it on MLS Season Pass on Apple TV. Timbers 360 is presented by Toyota. Can you believe it? There are only three regular season Timbers matches left in 2024. And the team is currently on an 11 game unbeaten streak at home. So come join us at Providence Park and help make it 14 as they look to make a push to the playoffs. To join the fun, visit Timbers.com forward slash tickets to secure your tickets for the remaining matches. It's all going right for the Timbers. It's Williamson! This time it's Ayala! Thanks for watching Timbers 360 presented by Toyota.